dusty mesa A looming shadow grows in the branch Good morning and welcome to the Rangers Review on Thursday the 25th <laughs> Good morning everybody and welcome to the morning briefing of Rangers Review. Uh, I'm Derek Clark Sport and uh, I'm delighted to be joined by Joshua Barry. Mr. Podcast himself and he's mimicking others. <laughs> Good morning, it's Thursday. We are at Luxro. We had a manic night last night, as I'm sure you've seen. I'm on a rain, you and we got the direction a little bit wrong, so we're running a little bit late for our tasting and we're gonna see how we get on when we get in here. t-shirt that's one regret of the trip we missed our scheduled time for the tour and the woman at the desk she was really happy to accommodate us but unfortunately our supervisor was not calling her out in front of us didn't find that very cool but we did sample some of the liquid on offer we learned a little bit but to be honest we were still distracted by what just went on so we smiled nodded and then had a little wonder the bar area looked great but it was early in the morning and we didn't really want to get on the cocktails just yet, especially after the night before. But as happens, you have a wee sample, but this is where things took a detour. Now I know I overheard this and I thought, well, let's say hello and see what happens. And before I knew it... Yeah, just point, shoot. Right boss, do you want it in that? Do you want it in the wee Glen Kerr or? I've got a little mini Glen here, right? So here we are, Lux Row, dishing out the Thompson Brothers, because what else would we do? Boys, do you want? Do you want? Yeah, want we? Yeah, it's not coming home with me, so I need to... <laughs> it's not going home with me, that's Here you go. So this is a single, single barrel, scotch, five years old. It's quite young. Um, refill bourbon cask. It's got quite a... It smells amazing. There you go. It's got a real sweet nose to it. Ah, a bit more. There you go. Appreciate you. No worries. Thoughts? Give us your notes. It's proof wise, it's, well it's 57.4 ABV. Oh my god. So that's... That's every level. That's I'm not a huge scotch guy and that's my yeah. favourite scotch I've ever tried. Yeah. The problem, so the way these bottles work, so they're only 500 mil, 50 cl. Um, they ballot them normally, and so this was this was a whiskey show exclusive in London, right. and the Thompson Brothers had to hand you one of the Thompson wow. Brothers had to yeah. hand you the token, personally, to go and buy it. That's and so I was that's fortunate, that's and I got one. So, towards scotch. so <laughs> I've always <laughs> drank Glen Levin 12 is like yep. my main scotch that I drink, and that is ten times better right. than Glen Levin 12. Yeah, oh, that is insanely good. So. It's MSRP, smooth, that's sweet. about $150. That is bad. Yeah. I, would, wow. I would pay $150 bucks would all day for that. That's delicious. There's 167 bottles, and that's it. So this is wow. number 65. Um, What's it again? Thompson Brothers, so they they operate out what could only be described as like a small single car garage. Um, but they've got planning permission. They're going to do a massive... It's not like this, yeah, but a yeah. massive expansion. Yeah. Um, the independent, they're an independent bottler, so normally they would buy casts of other stuff bottle that and yeah. sell it um, but this is our own make um, and it's great it's really Dude, good um, and so I thought I brought it and then I opened it yesterday at Glens Creek because I thought they were a small micro distillery I'll, yeah, I'll show you scotch wow. um, so yeah Anyone else want to pour? No, I just you guys had some? Yeah, yeah, good. I'm telling you, that's fantastic, dude. And they're based out of where? They're based out of a place called Dornock, which is, you know, you've heard of Loch Ness. Yeah, yeah. It's above that. Okay. So it's very far north. Okay. Um, Your family owns a hotel, right? They own a hotel called the Dornock Castle Hotel, which is like a castle, um, and it's got like, one of the best whiskey bars in the world. That is definitely the best scotch I've ever drank. Yeah, yeah, by far. That's fantastic. I'll get that. I'll, I'll, 
we'll make sure the guys hear that yeah. and they'll be delighted. I'm just, I, I'm, I'm not even getting anything for them. <laughs> I don't like the pain me. I'm just like, yeah, guys. <laughs> but I'm like, I need to make space in that case for the, the bottles I'm bringing back. So yeah, yeah. I'm like, let's get, let's get it out and get it amongst people that will appreciate it. Yeah, yeah that's cool. So yeah, guys, that's... pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you. And we're back on the road. Now those fine lads, they were visiting up from Tennessee. Big shout out to Bryce on completing his Weller collection. Now we know we all know how hard that is. But as we left Lux Row, we took this beautiful drive. We kept passing all these big buildings, and little did we know those were the rack houses, the warehouses for the barrels of the next destination. What a gaff this place is. What a place, honestly. The distillery centre has an amazing bar in it. A really well rated restaurant where we grabbed some lunch before we got on the tour that we were there to do. As part of our tour, we had some old fashioned tickets and I got this and then I left it in the tasting room. So I never even got a sip of it, but it looked really good. This was the tasting set up, headphones in and away we went. Now, the story of Bardstown itself is, and I'll keep this quite short and sweet, billionaire guy decides that he wants to get into bourbon, money's no object, throws all the money at it, creates this phenomenal facility in Bardstown, which is known as the home of bur bourbon at best, and they just keep growing and getting better and better, and their juice is fantastic as you're about to witness me experience here. Now the only sticking point in this is, sadly, that guy, the billionaire, who passed away before he got to see all this complete. But they're doing his legacy proud. We got something special for you guys. <laughs> I got first yeah, pour, the pity pour, because I was going to be 40 in a few weeks time. It's hard to see single barrels rolling out now more and more. Uh, we have our 60364 like we tasted in the classroom, a six-year-old single barrel about 124 proof. That's been what's hitting the shelf recently. Now, mentioning how many barrels that we fill up per year, this was number 61,267 that we put into our inventory by that time. Remember, we're sourcing products to be able to blend with them too, so those have to go in the inventory as well. But when this number goes to 20A03, when we resume barreling again, this number goes back down to zero. We restart by the year. again. Now we are on a clock this afternoon so first up we have to visit Heaven Hill. The visitor centre was free and a great walk around with the brands out there. Okay we've got the fighting cock, let's give it a try. Scotland. In the gift shop, well, that was just as busy. 
really regret not getting any of this mellow corn merch. But in the end, I did walk away with a bottle from here. On the road again, and this time it was to one of my favourite bourbons. It was to Four Roses. Sadly, just the bottle facility. And also, we didn't have a lot of time. 15 minutes to go. Made it. <laughs> Um, and that'll be one way of knowing exactly what would taste the best tea, okay. depending on how it sounds. And that's um, this sticker right here. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna get that. Yeah. And how much are they? Two bottles per person per okay. day. They're $99 a piece. Okay. Mm -hmm. The other one that I would say, uh, the Q, it is a floral E-string, but it does have lots of berry and um, notes in it as well. So that one usually has, I think usually calls out raspberries, cherries, uh, it usually has honeysuckle and some rich fruits in that. Got you. Fantastic. Now it's all about the recipes here, picking these up. So the OBSQ, they all, it's about the rack and where it's positioned in the warehouse and the proof and the yeast strain. I ended up getting one and I picked one up from me as well. The audio now started going haywire just before we moved on. You've guessed it, we went to Jim Beam, or rather the James B. Beam Distilling Company. It's some place, to be honest, they know how to sell themselves. Beautiful facilities, beautiful gift shop, the grounds are stunning, gift shop was rammed. I picked up a bottle in here, not this though. This was the historic Beam House. And then you had Mr. Booker himself kicking it back, just taking it all in. We grabbed more food at the restaurant, it was great. <laughs> Wind's picking up, afternoon Jim. That's us done the James Beam experience. It's been a long old day, Friday. We've had quite a few distilleries. Hope you've enjoyed coming with us. Picked up a couple of bottles in here. Now it's back to downtown Louisville, the hotel, and I can show you what I got. Let's go. Here we go Jim. No spoilers, but you don't get a bottle reveal yet in this video. But in the last video, did you remember how I mentioned when we were having breakfast that someone came and joined us at our table? Well, this person mentioned that there was a great art exhibition happening at a cool record store in the Highlands. And we thought, well, Friday night we had no plans, why not go there? I enjoy an art show, but the store itself is absolutely fantastic. Just a mad collection of vinyls and CDs and books and artworks and just everything that you could get your head around. They had brilliant place, but we really needed to get a move on. out in the Highland area, Highlands of Louisville tonight. We just painted that music shop, come book shop, come art gallery. And now we'll see where, oh, there's Spinelli's Pizza. Fancy that? Mm. Yeah, I'd, I'd get a slice. Yeah, I mean, a slice of pizza is not going to do any damage. Oh, 
That surely can't be a slice of pizza. Yeah. No way. Do I set the car? Okay, we're at a, a Spinelli's uh, in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, got a pepperoni. What we got here? Got a pretty, pretty decent undercarriage. Okay. I mean, I don't hate it. Yeah, <laughs> pretty good. Crust is good. I'm gonna give it a seven four. We moved on from reviewing pizza and we were passing a bar and I said, can we pop in here for one? I've heard of it. And then we can come back later because we were going for actual dinner. And I never got any footage of the walk up, but here's the picture. Neat. You don't record it? No, I didn't. I'm doing it. So you find me a neat whiskey bar, lounge, whatever, great bar. Trying the Green River, which isn't anything special in terms of availability. You can get it pretty much everywhere. But I was told last night that it's a great pickup bottle, like off the shelf, that I need to try. Um, I think it is in the UK now as well, but I think it's a little bit higher priced. So, got to try it. Really good. Tastes like bourbon. Good. Now. This is Bathtub Mary, a familiar sight in these parts. And there's an homage to her in the bar, and I tell you what, she was blessing us this night. Because as I was rambling on, as you just saw, there's a guy sitting behind me in a hat, having a drink at the bar. We get chatting whiskey, he recommends some cheap pours, and he tells us, well, he used to live and work in Scotland at the Dumblain Hydro, but he also used to run the biggest buy and sell group on Facebook for whiskey. And he actually owns the bar. The man himself owned Paul. He insisted on pouring us a 19 year old, old St. Nick and then showing us his shop next door. <laughs> I know, but well, you're right, this is the Old Crow, oh, wow. Glens Creek. Yeah, that's exactly. Yeah, because David told us all about that yesterday. Oh, shit. Well, then not, now I want you to try some of that next door because you get to actually try. From what, that factory. From that distillery yeah, yeah. back oh, when it was actually oh, making it. Oh yeah. man, that's amazing. That's, so <laughs> that's, so that's easy to drink. That's so good. Is it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's good. I love it. It's all, these are known as like caramel bombs. It just tastes like caramel. Really? Butterscotch, yeah. John Paul, I know you, I know what your reaction will be. Come see this. You know the first pour you gave us? Under 30 next door? Uh, yeah, drink only one. Uh, I don't think that changes too much. 92 blends. Or... <laughs> I have to go back and look at the, the look at the wall. Sold through like everything you see in the bar. We probably sold that over five times e easily. Like and now that we have this, it's it's a uh, return in the Right, the extensive stuff. <laughs> yeah, and this is the, 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 these are things like like we'll buy collections. And I don't know shit about some of the scotch, yeah. but uh, quite honestly, vintage Johnny Walker the scotch drinkers love it. It's, it's like really good. Really good. I don't just buy it. That was a game when I first started. Yeah. People buy me scotch. His company and his hospitality was unbelievable. So it's a 15 year old bourbon. The distillery burnt down in 1996. So they haven't been able to replicate the. They don't have the yeast for it. Like their new mash bill, <laughs> their new stuff is good from their new distiller. Free Fire Heaven Hill is just kind of like. This. And so, a massive thanks to Owen and all the staff at Neat for treating us so well. But then we weren't finished. We had to round it off. No weapons. And we're better to round it off with some high lifes and some cheap American bar food than the infamous 
back to work.